COINTEL PRO stands for Counterintelligence Program, primarily run by the FBI as a covert action program against domestic dissidents. The use of infiltration, psychological warfare, harassment through the legal system, and the use of extralegal force and violence, including murder, probably began in the 1950s and is now a permanent feature of U.S. government. Targets included the Civil Rights Movement, the Women's Rights Movement, the Anti-War Movement, the Environmental Movement, opposition political parties, and basically any progressive group in American society. The Senate and Congressional hearings into the activities of the FBI and CIA were crushed. The Senate Committee's report was edited by the agencies being investigated before its publication. The House Committee's report including an account of FBI and CIA obstruction of its inquiry, was suppressed altogether. Senator Church and Congressman Pike, the committee chairs, were both targeted in their re-election campaigns by the intelligence agencies and defeated, their careers destroyed. The Freedom of Information Act did open up access to FBI documents, and lawsuits forced the release of some COINTELP files to the media, but the most important files were withheld or destroyed, and former operatives report that the most heinous crimes were never committed to writing. William C. Sullivan, who ran the COINTEL program in the 1960s, was killed in a 1977 hunting accident shortly before giving testimony to a grand jury in 1977. The only two FBI officials who were ever prosecuted for COINTEL pro crimes were quickly pardoned by President Ford. There was an appearance of reform that was largely aimed at placating a weary public that had become disillusioned after Watergate. The most prominent target of COINTELPRO in the 1960s was Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who received a blackmail letter from J. Edgar Hoover that detailed the existence of Dr. King's extramarital affairs and suggested he should suicide himself to preclude the release of the material to the press and its negative effect on his family and his movement. The surveillance of Dr. King included the 112th Military Intelligence Unit and even the use of U-2 spy planes to take photographs. Dr. King was marked, barely a month before his murder, for elimination as a potential messiah who could unify and electrify the black movement. The FBI planned to replace him, quote, in his role of the leadership of the Negro people with conservative black lawyer Samuel Pierce, who was later named to Ronald Reagan's cabinet. The theme of forced suicide is repeated on others targeted by COINTELPRO. Jean Seberg was an actress involved in civil rights. Her husband received a forged letter from the FBI detailing a fictitious affair she was supposedly having with a black activist. The actress was pregnant at the time and attempted suicide had a miscarriage, and eventually did commit suicide. Forced suicide on a COINTELPRO target allows intelligence agencies deniability for the crime. In effect, it is the perfect crime. A total of 2,300 officially approved COINTEL actions were admitted to the Senate Intelligence Committee, but thousands more have since been revealed. Ultimately, FBI documents disclose six major programs. FBI operatives were directed to disrupt meetings of targeted groups, spread rumors, inflame disagreements over what people normally fight over, money, politics, race, gender, sex, and to exacerbate rivalries and jealousy, to lead activists into unnecessary danger, and to set them up for false prosecutions. False news stories, forged documents, and anonymous letters and phone calls as well as pressure on landlords and their employers make up just some of the strategies used against activists. The major violence of the domestic terrorist campaign was directed at the black nationalist and American Indian movements. These individuals were readily imprisoned on false charges or assassinated. British Commander Frank Kitson first codified counterinsurgency operations theory in his book Low Intensity Operations, Subversion, Insurgency, and Peacekeeping and he insists that infiltration and psychological operations be mounted against dissident groups in normal times before any mass movement can develop. 
These tactics were adopted into COINTELPRO against American citizens in peacetime, with considerable energy spent ensuring that the different progressive groups did not link up and cooperate. Specifically, the anti-war movement, composed of suburban white youth, and the black nationalist movement. There was also a major effort to preclude African-American leaders from linking up with leaders in Africa. Infiltration of the KKK by the FBI reached 10 to 20 percent of its membership at the height of the civil rights struggle, and these assets, along with neo-Nazi party members, were used to attack civil rights workers and activists. COINTEL operations are presently being incorporated into the development of microwave and radio frequency radiation weapons, dissidents that in the past were visibly attacked or assassinated in a traditional manner are now targeted for elimination using electromagnetic weapons. These internal dissidents are used as human guinea pigs and experimental subjects in terminal experiments that are designed to force a suicide, incarceration, or premature death due to the effects of ionizing and non-ionizing radiation. These political assassinations are accomplished with invisible bullets that leave no obvious injuries. The driving of a target to suicide using microwave hearing as well as other techniques is perfectly deniable because these individuals are tormented invisibly, unable to seek help from the psychiatric community due to the symptoms of the attacks mimicking symptoms of schizophrenia that naturally affect several million Americans. Thus, the intelligence agencies have achieved perfect deniability for their crimes.